So I'm gonna just do insulation resistance tests now. And I'm gonna use my crocodile clip for the CPC. And then the probe for the phase conductors. And what I'm gonna do, first of all, I'll leave the main switch off, but I'll just turn the RCDs on and all the breakers on and just do a test directly from the buzz bar. And just see what I get. Because there's nothing connected really, so should be clear. So I've got 180, 200, greater than 200 mega ohms, which is great. I'll do a 500 volt one as well. Shouldn't be any harm in that. Yeah. And then I'll do the same from CPC to neutral. And we've got clear as well. So that's brilliant. So I don't actually need to do the full array of tests because everything's clear. So that saves me some time. In terms of phase to neutral insulation resistance testing, I have got all the lights on, so, and I'm not gonna go around and disconnect all the light bulbs, um, but we can do certain circuits. So for example, the cooker circuit, should be able to do that. That's fine. Sockets, we should be able to do. All clear. And then as soon as we go to the lights, we've got dead short. Yeah, um, same with the smoke detectors probably. Okay, that's clear. Oh, that's the security alarm, which I don't think is used. Um, that's all clear. That's all clear. Interesting. Uh, oh yeah, that's because I'm on the wrong neutral bar. That's why I need to go, need to go on this neutral bar. And it's slightly traumatic every time my crocodile clip comes off. I don't know why, it's just sort of like really annoys me. Uh, okay, we've got dead short there. So there's something running off the socket circuits there, so we need to check that. That's clear. Short. Short. Clear. So sockets downstairs, I'm guessing it's just the appliances that are connected. So if I turn the isolators off for the appliances, then that should clear it up. Right, so now I've disconnected the appliances and that's all clear. So I just turned off those switch isolators for the various appliances because it's impossible to disconnect those as they are actually um, you know, built into the units and whatever. So that's fine all good for insulation resistance. So next, what I'll do is put this buzz bar cover back on, like so, and then I'll do RCD tests on these two RCDs. So I'm gonna to have to liven it up again by turning on the main isolator outside. Do two RCD tests and then I'll go around and do earth loop impedance on all the circuits. Right, so this is all livened up now. So what I'm gonna do is just turn the main switch on and then turn one of the RCDs on and do an RCD test on that particular RCD on the outgoing side, which means I just need to get access to that buzz bar, but I'll be careful to avoid getting my fingers anywhere near it. And in terms of the RCD, it's just a type AC RCD, so we only need to do one set of tests. So I'm just gonna run through, there are six tests that we do. Two at half times, two at one times, and two at five times, I delta in. Okay. So that's all good. Obviously the other, the seventh test is the push button test, which I did do already earlier, but just for the sake of continuity, I'll show you that as well. So we've got for half times greater than 2000 milliseconds. Just show you that on here. So you can see how it works. Um, 
Yeah, so for half times, we've got greater than 2000 milliseconds at uh, zero, de oh, sorry, zero degrees of the sine wave and 180 degrees of the sine wave. Then at one times zero degrees, we've got 18.2 milliseconds. One times 180 degrees of the sine wave, 18 milliseconds. Five times zero degrees, we've got 16.7 milliseconds and five times 180 degrees, we've got 16.7 milliseconds. So that's fine because at five times it should trip within 40 milliseconds and at one times it should trip within 200 milliseconds. So we're absolutely well within the uh, boundaries there. What I will do as well is just do an, a ramp test on the RCD, which is this one. And that just measures how many milliamps it actually trips at. So it trips at 21 milli milliamps. That's absolutely fine as well. So obviously it's a 30 milliamp RCD, but there's a tolerance in there that means that we should find that it doesn't trip at less than 15 milliamps. So that's absolutely fine. So I'll just trip that off now, and then I'll do this one over this side as well. Same thing. So we'll do the push button test first. Then we'll do a ramp test as we've still got it on that setting. So we've got 24 milliamps, which again is fine. And then we'll put it on the normal RCD setting, auto test, and just do the six tests. All good. So again, we've got um, 18.2 milliseconds and 18 milliseconds, 16.7 and 16.9, so absolutely fine. So what I can do now is put the board cover on and then go around and do my earth loop impedance testing everywhere. And that's it. One test that I nearly forgot to do, which is a very important one, is the external earth fault loop impedance, or ZE, and the PFC, perspective fault current, and PEFC, perspective earth fault current. So in order to do this, we make sure everything's turned off, apart from the incoming tails, and we disconnect the main earthing conductor here, so that there's no bonding conduct connector conductors or other circuit protective conductors connected in parallel. So we get a true ZE reading that way. So I just click my crocodile clip on there like that. Turn my tester onto the high current setting and then go to the phase conductor and I just do a test there. And we've got 0 0.17 for ZE and 1.4 Ka or kiloamps for PEFC, which is perfectly adequate for a TNCS system, which this is. It should be a maximum of 0 0.35 ohms, so that's absolutely fine. And the PFC rating, these breakers are all rated at 6 Ka, so as long as it's lower than the rating of the breakers, then it's fine. So I will connect the CPC back in now. Well, actually, this is not the CPC, this is the main earth. I'm trying to get my terminologies all right, and of course, I mess it up every time. Come on. There we go. You might notice as well, we've only got one main bonding conductor. I'll show you in a minute, but the main water is PVC, so it doesn't need bonding, so that's just the gas. Uh, so what we do now is we measure PEFC with the main earth connected, and it's the same, and then we do one to neutral as well, 
So I'll get my probe and just connect between live and neutral to test that. So we go between phase and neutral to test for PFC. And we've got 1.3 Ka for that. So actually the resistance of the neutral is slightly higher than the resistance of the main earth, which is a little bit unusual, but they're both connected together at the main uh, incomer anyway. So that's all good. Now, one thing that we obviously need to note about this consumer unit is that it is made of combustible material and it's located in an exit route because this is the front door and it's in the main hallway. So according to the regs, let me know in the comments, how would you code this? Because obviously it was designed in 2014, it was fully compliant, it was fine. But now the regulations have changed since then we've had 17th edition amendment um, three, and then we've had now 18th edition, which specifies that consumer units should be made of non-combustible material, i.e. usually metal. Um, I will code this as a C3 because there is no evidence of loose connections anywhere. There's no evidence of heat. If there was, then it would be a code two. Let me know if you think I'm right or if you've got another opinion. I'd love to know your comments.